I want to continue the discussion of the week four notes and look at routing third party components and how to work with them and then build, build up an example. So over the next two videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use a whole bunch of different techniques that we're talking about in the notes together. So my ultimate goal is to be able to build something using the GitHub API. I want to switch APIs. We've been using the uh, recres.in API, but I want to try a different one just to show you that the same ideas are usable using other APIs. And I also want to show you how to work with uh, dynamic routing inside the client. So I want to build an application that looks like it has lots of pages and it uses URLs to let you index into different parts of the app but I want to do it all inside of a single React app, all inside the browser. So that's our goal. I'm also going to introduce you to working with third-party components. So we've, you know, we've been talking about using things like Bootstrap. I'm going to show you how to use Bootstrap with React, for example, or how to use custom components. Um, anyway, I'll come back to that. I have a couple. I have a number of things I want to show you to uh, to get us started. But but let's start our discussion with talking about routing. So there's a good set of notes here, and I'm also going to be referring to the documentation for React Router. So I'll jump back and forth between the two of them. Okay, so the concept with routing is that we're going to write a set of components that represent pages in our app. So if you can think about a website, a uh, website that has various sections, you want to have an about page, a home page, you want to be able to see a list of products. You want to have user profiles, a shopping cart, or whatever. Maybe you have six, seven, eight, ten, whatever number of pages, and you have different URLs. So what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to model my entire app as a series of React components, but those components don't necessarily have to be something small in the page. It could also be the whole page. So I want to have a set of pages and I want to be able to flip between those pages based on what the user does in the URL. And I want things like the back button to work the way that the user would expect. So to do this, we're going to reach for what is typically known as a router. And one of the things about React that is, as I said in an earlier lecture, either something you appreciate about it or something that you find frustrating is that React is not a complete set of code for doing everything that you're ever going to do in a web app. Some people refer to this as, you know, a framework being batteries included. So, you know, the idea being that if you used to buy some toy at the toy store and it would you'd get it home and then you realize that you also need to go and buy batteries in order to use this toy. So it's like a secondary purchase that you have to make. A lot of frameworks are like that too, where you get the framework, the framework does a lot, but it doesn't include some of the batteries that you need. And one of the batteries that you tend to need is you need some solution for doing routing. And so when we're working with React, especially uh, Create React App, which we're doing right now, you need to bring your own router. So there are a number of different routers that you can, you can use. I'm going to show you one in these videos. And I may switch to using some other ones in, in future videos because I tend to use a variety of different routers depending on what I'm building. But they all work generally the same. So I want to just take you through and show you the mechanisms for how we're going to do this. But let's say something about how you get started using it. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to install them. So as I say, it doesn't come bundled in. So you're going to have to install it. And the one we're going to be using is called React Router DOM. And that's what the website I have here. This is React Router. And there's a DOM version. There are different versions of it. The one we want is the DOM version because we're working inside of a web browser. So that's where we're going to focus. So in their instructions, you'll see they have the same thing. Like you need to install it. You'll notice in the instructions in the notes, it says dash dash save. And that's important to do because then it will add it to your package.json file automatically for you so that you don't have to remember to put it there. So what we're building when we create a, when we put a router into an app, we're creating what's often referred to as a single page app or an SPA. So think about an application like this. Imagine I have a series of components. I have a home page, 
I have a projects page and I have a single project. So I have the ability to look at a bunch of different pages. Now, obviously in the example that we're seeing here, these pages are very limited. We only have, in this case, an H1 element. But imagine, you know, we stretch it out and we have lots of different components and we'll do that in a moment when I uh, start building up the GitHub uh, single page app. What we need is we need a mechanism to be able to switch between these. Like we don't want to show the home page and the project page at the same time. So we need something to make that decision for us. The source of truth, as we say, about what we should be showing at any given time is going to be the URL. So if the user is at, for example, if they're at the root of the project slash, we want to show the home component. However, if they go to the project component, I want to show the project component or the projects. I want to show the projects component, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a mechanism that's very common in React, and that is at the highest part or up at somewhere at the top of our uh, React DOM tree, we're going to create, we're going to put a component that's going to manage this for us. Now this is kind of an odd idea. So I want you to notice what we're doing here. We're going to import a browser router component. This is a React component from the React router DOM. And then we're going to use it like this. So we're going to, we're going to create uh, a browser router that's going to be wrapped around app. So what's going to feel slightly weird here is so far, all of the components that we've been building have been visual. So when you think about uh, building a component for a button or building a component that shows an image for a user or multiple images for different users, those all had a visual aspect to them. What we're doing here is we're starting to work with components that have behavior, but they don't necessarily have a visual aspect to them. So by putting the browser router around our whole app, what we're actually doing is we are putting the browser router kind of in charge of how the app is going to get rendered. And we're also making it possible for all the components deep, 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 deep down in the app to get information about what's going on in the router. So in a little bit, I'll show you how we would do this. But for example, things like which page are we on or if I need to get parameters out of a URL, those types of things. Okay, so step one, we have to install the router. Step two, we have to build a series of pages and we do that by creating components. Step three, we need to wrap our app in the browser router so that it's possible for the URL management to kind of take over the way that our app is going to render. All right, so now what happens inside of the app itself? So that was in index.js. What do we do in the app? In the app, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in all of our pages. And if you wanted to name it home page, projects page, you could do that. So in this case, it's just called home projects and project. We need to pull all of these in so that we can work with them. And you'll also see here that we're pulling in a couple of, a couple of other things that we're going to use, other components that we're going to use from React Router DOM. So we pull in a switch and we pull in a route. So what you're going to build is instead of saying, I want to render the home component, you have to say, I'd like to render one of these components. And I'm, I'm going to do that inside of a switch. So the switch is another one of these behavioral components. It's not really, it's not visual in the page. You're not going to see it. It doesn't exist. But what it's going to do is it's going to decide which of the uh, routes that are listed inside the switch is going to be rendered at any given time. This is a lot like what you've been doing in Express. If you think about how you build routes in Express. So in Express, you create a router and the router would have all kinds of routes endpoints like the slash, for example, or projects or, you know, whatever. And so each one of these is uniquely identified with a path name. And then you have a function that would, um, you know, middleware that renders the, it accepts the request and it processes the response. We're doing something fairly similar here. We're saying 
this route is for the home like slash. If, if the user goes to slash, then what I want to do is I want to render the home component. Or if they go to projects, I want to render the projects component, etc., all the way down. Now I want to show you a slightly different syntax for this because when you're working with React Router uh, DOM, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So here's the same code written a slightly different way. And this is a second way of defining how your routes work with components. So you'll notice that I'm not passing a render here. I don't have a render prop where I'm you know, having a function that renders that component. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm just passing a child element into the route. So the route for about is going to render the about component, okay? And I'm gonna tend to write my code this way. So the notes show you one way to do it. This way is correct. You can do it this way. There's actually a third way you can do it as well where you can specify a component that you wanna render and name the component. But to me, I think this is the cleaner way to do it. And this is the way you'll see it done in the docs. So I'm gonna use this method, but essentially I'm saying, if it's about, do this. If it's users, do this. And if it's slash, do this. Now a switch is going to render one of those routes every single time. So it's gonna decide based on the URL, which one of these needs to get rendered. Okay, so we have a really, we have a great way to be able to switch between parts of our app based on working with, just with pieces of the URL. Okay, so let's keep talking about the theory of this before I go into uh, actually building it. Um, let's talk about adding um, components to the path. So another thing that we can do that's really cool is we can specify in our route that instead of having an exact match, like do you notice here it says exact? So we're passing a Boolean prop here. We're saying route exact path equals project. So that means that if the route is exactly slash project, then render this component here. However, down here, we're doing something slightly different. We're saying if the path begins with project and then includes an ID variable, so we have a parameter that we're inserting into this. So this makes it possible for us to do something like we've done in Express, where when you render, when you create a route in Express, you can say that this is the products route. And then after the products is slash colon ID, and you can pass an ID. Now in that route, you can work with the ID in order to make your application work with runtime data. So at runtime, you can pass in any ID and it'll work. So now we can have a page which has been parameterized. So we can pass in a parameter and we can render project ID 123 or project ID 1234. Like both of those will work, but we only have one component that we're gonna, we're gonna do this with. I'm gonna show you a different mechanism for, for how to pass this down, but you can see that one way to do it is to use um, this render function and to, to accept props and then pass in props.match.params.id. I'll show you a different way I want you to think about doing it with hooks, but this is valid. This is a valid way to do it. And you can do the same thing with query parameters. Um, you know, when you're pulling in, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be in the URL path. It could be a query parameter as well. And we'll look at examples of this. Um, another thing that we're gonna deal with is, I told you a moment ago that here, I have to render one of these routes. So, a similar thing is often done in Express where what you do is you put your most specific path names first. So slash about appears first before slash. And that's a common way of doing it. So what you wanna do is you wanna be more specific, more specific, less specific, less specific, and then general. And the very last one can actually be a route that doesn't have any path. And so for example, you could do a 404 page. So if you wanted to have a page that says, you know, not found, I don't know what you're asking for. You could have a route that renders a 404 page here and design your 404 page to look any way that you want. So if somebody asks for some URL that you've 
you know, you haven't programmed for, you're not expecting, your app isn't gonna crash or it isn't gonna do something weird, you're just gonna send that user to a 404 page and they're gonna have to go and figure out why they've, you know, done this incorrectly. If you don't, it's going, like in this case, what would happen is it would always render the home, the home component. So if you didn't ask for about and you didn't ask for users, it would default to rendering the final, the final one. So a switch is gonna try and go through the list and if it gets to the bottom and it can't render any of them, it'll just render the bottom one. Okay, a couple more brief notes before we uh, dive into coding this. And that is how we do linking. So when you're working with the router, you're creating this fake sense of switching between pages. So what's gonna happen is the browser router at the top level of the app is going to take care of managing which page component is showing at which time. And if you wanna be able to have one page component linked to another page component, you can't use the traditional anchor tag that we would always use. The reason being, we have to have something that allows the browser router to know that we wanna switch pages between one page in the app and another because we're never gonna reload the page. So a single page application is gonna load once and then it's gonna just swap out components at runtime but you're always gonna be on the same page. If I navigate to a new URL like this, that's gonna do another trip to the server and then come back. And I kinda of wanna cut that out. So one of the benefits or one of the side effects of building this way is that I'm not gonna reload the page. It's gonna load once and then it's gonna be just gonna be stable and the router will take care of switching between things. So all of these routers will provide you a way to move between them. So instead of using an anchor like this, I'm gonna use a link component. And the link component is available through the um, React Router DOM. And so it works in a similar way, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a path that I wanna link to. So link to this particular path, and then I can give it a name. That's gonna be rendered in the DOM as a regular link but it's going to take care of doing the wiring up back into the app to make, make it possible for that to work. Okay, so that's some background on how the router works so that when I show it to you, you know, you've got a little bit of an idea of how the, you have an idea of how the, you know, the underlying code should function. Okay, so before I go and build something with this, let me say something about working with other, other components. So in the example that I'm gonna to build today, so far what we've been doing is every time we wanted to build a React component, we had to build it from scratch. So I was constantly building things like the home page. Like take a look at this home page right here. This just uses regular intrinsic elements to all browsers, like using an H1, a paragraph tag, a table, a div, whatever. And that's fine if you want to code everything from scratch. But I would love to be able to use a set of pre-made components. I'd like to be able to assemble my application by picking and choosing different components that are already built. They're already styled, they already look good, they've already been tested, they have all the accessibility features built in, etc. I just wanna grab those components and I wanna use them in my app. So, now that you understand the mechanics of working with React components, A, you can build your own, but B, you can also pick up components that other people have used. And the ecosystem of React components is massive, absolutely massive. So if you go to npmjs.com and you do a search for React component, like there are 51,000 React components that come up right away. And there's components for doing everything, for doing drag and drop, for doing color pickers, for doing little toast pops up, pop ups in the bottom of there, for doing icons, for doing tabs, everything you can imagine. Somebody has written code already to do this. So as I say, we've been working with Bootstrap, and Bootstrap is great if you want to build, you know, common layouts and you need common components. The way Bootstrap it works, it's CSS and you use the classes and then you're able to build pages that look like, you know, they look like Bootstrap. And if you look at um, the components, they have a long list of components, you know, things like 
ways to do alerts at the top of the page or ways to do buttons. And they have, you know, essentially everything has been done through classes. So I want to show you an alternate universe, which is the React way of doing this. And in React, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to use React Bootstrap. And what it's going to let me do is it's going to let me use React components instead of working with classes. I'm going to do almost no CSS at all. And I'm going to be able to use these components and think, remember what a component is. A component is a way of accepting data as props and then rendering it and rendering it with HTML and CSS. Like both of those things can be included. So using like the components for React Bootstrap, for example, I can do an alert if I want to do an alert or I can do anything else. And instead of using classes, I'm going to use React components. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how this works. And I'm also going to show you how to do some interesting data loading techniques using a another React component, this time a React hook. So I will, I'll talk you through it as we go, but the basic idea of what I want to build is something that takes data from the GitHub uh, REST API, and it allows me to render it using Bootstrap in a React application. I'm going to build routing so that I have a single page application that I can switch between pages and different components of it. So I will, I'll pause this now and I'll pick it up in the next video where I will actually actually work through coding this.